Greetings, all YouTubers. It's the Master Versal Toy Hunter again with a, a special uh, project review that I'm working on at the moment. So, as you can see, it's roughly in its early stages of development, but um, in the, the, the re revival of the Eternia playset in the Moto Origins line, it's... It's turning out to be rather pricey, if you know what I mean. Uh, but for all of you with uh, deep uh, bags of holding, or deep satchels, as it were, uh, all the best of luck to you, I suppose. But f for the rest of us, we'll, we'll have to admire the set from afar. Um, yes, I'll try and be quick and explaining this build that I have on at the moment. So here um, I've begun work on the main tower of the Eternia playset and we can see the the lion head off in the background there next to some rather suspicious looking evil fellows right behind there. Um, so where to begin? Well um, I sat at my mystical mirror and I found as many uh, reference photos as I could of the original playset, all different angles and shots, uh, as well as the same thing for the head, but I, I basically tried to find photos of every, everything I could pertaining to the set. Um, uh, for the most part, I looked for side-on and front-on and bird's-eye view uh, reference images so I could use them to trace out the rough shapes. But initially, I, I started with the lion head here. So I, I drew a picture of the front-on of the lion head just to get a rough idea for scale and I before I trace that I took one of my loyal subjects uh, He-Man figures to uh, roughly um, pose in front of a photo of the the main section of the tower just to try and get a rough scale for the lion head so once I, I got that all figured out I uh, traced the, the front-on size of the lion head to produce a, a series of main templates for the, the front-on view of the main tower. Uh, of course, I've only got one of those left now after I cut up the this sort of portion um, here up for making the uh, the cardboard pieces that I would attach together. So, uh, I have to jimmy the, shimmy the camera up a little bit there. So that will roughly sit like that, thereabouts. So once I uh, had all that done, I uh, went to my reference photos and I took up all the photos I had showing various sides of the lion head and I sort of zoomed them so they were roughly all the same scale to each other and I began tracing all the different shapes but I only needed to do half of them because then I could flip the templates over and do the other side you see so once I had traced all the parts to certain extents, I was able to sort of roughly freehand on paper how the the different shapes would coincide with each other, which is eh, has an element of difficulty to it. But I've been doing cardboard models and costumes for a number of years now, so you you kind of get an eye on how the the different forms are manipulated once you uh, join them together. The, the, the harder parts were, of course, all these little step gaps to make the, you know, the 
the steps and the design of the head so that they were a little bit more difficult to work out because you have to account on how they shape the next parts that join on you see so I I didn't spend much time using these fancy mystic mirror programs like uh, I think it's blender and and all that or or one they use as I think the humans call it his peppercora so I didn't do any of that I just went the old-fashioned route and yes yeah, so once I had all that figured out here you can see a bunch of pieces that I had after joining bits of paper and cutting then rejoining again and dry fitting I was able to come up with more permanent templates so this is basically a half halfish template as it were um, of course as I was going through building the uh, lion head the there, there were some areas where they didn't join up, so I had to cut the cardboard itself and add new cardboard in to make them fit a bit better. But for the most part, it was rather smooth in its construction. So, so yes, once I had all that, I, I went and put another bit of paper there and traced the, the template set again that I would use to cut out and place over the cardboard and trace around and then cut all the cardboard pieces out and for the main tower uh, framing I again went to my reference photos on the the mystic mirror and uh, traced a side of the uh, the main tower Again, trying to scale it up with not not only the templates from the main tower front part here, but also the figures to make sure everything lined up to a certain point. So I, I had that and I cut out all these sort of, again, step, step-like pieces. And then when I made a... A piece for cutting out I traced this again onto a fresh bit of paper and cut all that out for the, it to be the template but when I traced it onto the cardboard I sort of because all this had been cut out I sort of sprayed it open a bit more because when I go to assemble it of course these create like a, a rock side rock formation so I wanted them to stick out in steps so we'll move on to uh, that part of the the review. So once I had it all cut out and basically joined onto this section here, if we move into the inside, I used uh, little cardboard strips to push out the rock formation detail. And after doing that, I, of course, went over with paper, newspaper mache from the, uh, the, the Eternos Times uh, just to build in that sort of step detail. A bit, bit of a job doing both sides. But the, the more interesting part of the tower, of course, is its iconic grill-like design that spans the almost the entirety of the main tower so that was a little bit more of a challenge to achieve so we turn it once again to the back so once i once i figured out what to do i decided to go with sort of like a ribbing type process of course these will be removed once i'm a bit more got this area a bit more solid with some resin but yes, I made these ribbing pieces to force out that sort of sharp ridging that goes up there. Now, this part that sort of juts out a little bit, that was um, plastic putty, I believe the humans call it. Very uh, handy stuff. 
So I made a little cardboard frame or a molding that I just stuck to this area of the cardboard and then filled, pushed and pushed all the uh, plastic putty into that just a little bit at first to fill in all this area and the area around there and then with the second amount I tried to get molded to these sharp uh, ridges as best I could there's still some areas where I have to fill in a bit more um, also to keep it sturdy I made these uh, shaping pieces just to keep it all steady of course this will eventually have a, a platform piece that will slot in there, but I'll have to make another one to go on top of this with a bit of a a few mil gap between the two. So yes, that's that's how we are looking at the moment. See I've got the lion armholes cut in there also. And you can see I've already gone over it with a bit of resin already. It's had about whoa, two and a bit layers on so far. But today I've started making the main entranceway wall out of cardboard. It's just been held in by those two clamps there. So that will get stuck on via these tabs that I made off this main cardboard piece. You can see a few of those tabs there. So that helped me glue the the cardboard pieces together of the main tower framing. And of course there's this shape here that helps to hold everything in shape I guess and together. So yes when again as I, I think I mentioned, when I went around scaling this, I did basically the, the tower first and holding a, one of these loyal subjects figures up to my mystic mirror screen to gauge on the rough size when I was zooming in on the reference photo. So he can, he man can quite happily, hopefully he does, yes, he can quite happily sit in there. Just move our camera down a bit. There we go. So yes, there's plenty of room for him to get in the main entrance there, which I, I think that is roughly. I've never seen the playset in person or had it, obviously. I wasn't born when it came out, I don't think. Um, so yes, we'll place the, the lion head roughly in position there. Uh, just a moment, we'll get, get it looking a bit better. I acquired this peculiar sticky stuff from the planet Earth, Queen Marlena's home planet. It's quite useful. I don't know why um, Man at Arms hasn't come up with it yet. He's usually more onto these sort of things. So we'll just uh, put a bit of the sticky tape, I, I think the humans call it. Make sure we press it into the moulding there. Of course I've done a bit of resin work on this one already, so it's, it's semi-rigid, it's holding its shape. Of course I had struts, cardboard struts holding the um, the light head in, in shape while I applied the resin. I think that's had about three coats so far. So let's just go along here and fit this on as best we can. Try and get it nice and level.
Oh, uh, Fister has taken a tumble there, but he's a, a pretty sturdy fellow. I'm sure he will survive. Might might just get another tab of the... Oh, it's not very strong, this tape. It's ripping on me already. Here we go, there's a decent piece. Stick your one up there. How are we looking? Looks like Man at Arms took a tumble too. So there, there's how we're looking at the moment. So, uh, he man can use the entrance because he's a, a good fellow. But, uh, as we all know, Skeletor's a bit of a naughty boy. So when he he comes in there, mm, now I can enter Eternia. Nobody can stop me. <laughs> but old Skeletor here, he's got another thing coming. As we know, the, the lion's mouth drops down, I think, and his hands swoop around to gobble him up. Gobble, gobble, there he's gone. Um, so yes, regarding the hands, I I believe the original place it, the, the mountings for the, the arms uh, attached to the base first, and they sort of, the, the mechanisms popped up underneath the... Uh, the main tower here and then I think you attach the arms afterwards so they poked through the holes but on this uh, set I I'm gonna go a little bit different and uh, make up my own mechanism to to move the the arms in so they can grab the figures and permanently attach them onto the onto the floor here and uh, just uh, as it were, attach the arms from the outside. So yes, we we have a bit of work on our hands for the most part. But uh, as with the plastic putty, once I've got all the resin and things coated on the main tower, we'll go in with some more uh, plastic putty and do some more sculpting work over the whole general area. I'll have to do the same on the lion head as well just to get the the shape a bit better working with the cardboard the nose sort of warped warped to one side on me it's, it's just how it goes really um, even the slightest different shape can throw something off but for what it is, it, it, it went together fairly easily. Um, also, another thing I did was, um, in my reference photos, I found basically bird's eye view uh, reference images of the uh, the platform pieces. So uh, I, I believe this one will, will be the first platform piece That it was slot in there, and of course we'll have the the elevator hooks into this area roughly. So yes, I suppose that's the the down and the low, as it were. Of course, been scaled for. I should have mentioned this. At the start of my video for loyal subjects figures it'll be a little bit smaller than the the set made for origins or the the vintage uh, motu figures but being smaller to be a more manageable piece to work into a space somewhere in my collection but yes i i hope you enjoyed this Rough little review of my loyal subject scale and attorney a playset project. Oh, Skeletor's not having a good standing day 
Oh, there he goes. So, yes, I hope to uh, keep you all updated on how this will go. It'll be a bit of work, and I have a few other videos I've been uh, procrastinating on of late. You know, the usual thing, mixing potions and... And uh, safeguarding the universe, as it were, takes up a lot of time. But we'll, we'll eventually get the, the whole thing completed over time. And uh, all, th all, th all things take, all good things take time, I suppose. You just have to be patient and keep at it. And if you feel you're getting bored or dry for ideas, you can always walk away and come back, which is... Also a good idea, you don't want to go take things too far and then ruin them. It's always good to take a break every now and then. Uh, the only other thing I can think of is, yes, I have to build some little platforms to uh, for the eyes to go on, which will be a, possibly a set of needle-felting cat eyes that will uh, attach onto that once it's relatively finished with all the plastic putty sculpt work over the lion head and I wanted to play with a few ideas like uh, molding some cracking around the this area of the the tower just to make it look a bit more unique and give it sort of a a loyal subjects vibe so this top part of the tower I may I may make a bit stumpier, so maybe up to where this piece with the um, the supports come out to hold up the monorail. So giving it that sort of deformed or stumpy aesthetic that the, the loyal subjects figures have. Don't know if you can, can get that centered right. But yes, that will reduce the height by probably 20 or so millimetres. Because that was the where I'd come to when I first made the templates. But anyway, we'll move on. And, um... Thank you for watching, and from all the, the fellows here of Eternia, uh, have a good journey, everybody. And may the power be with you, or is that a Power Rangers term? I don't know, but uh, I, I use the word power, so it can be used across the board of franchises, really. <laughs> but yes, uh, if you would like to follow my um, must my Masters of the Universe collecting escapades and side projects. Feel free to subscribe and like this video or comment what you think. And be interesting to see if you'll be getting the uh, Motu Origins Eternia if, if it manages to get crowdfunded. I guess uh, all the power to you, you fellows and uh, ladies. And I, I might see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.